Welcome back to Disco Ball's golf channel where I'm working on a huge project right now that should be out coming soon, but uh, the, uh, the going on it is you know, slightly slow, so I figured I'd put out this, uh, this video in the meantime. So earlier this year, Discmania came out with the Horizon Cloud Breakers, and uh, I had ordered them and never got a chance to do a disc review, so we're not using those. What we're actually looking at is the Simon Lazat time lapse. Uh, same flight numbers. I got it from uh, good friends that parked it. So we all know the the destroyer archetype, where it's you know twelve five minus one three, good, beefy, you know, reliable. Beat it in, it gets some glide, you know, that sort of deal. Everyone knows what it does. I've heard that these Simon line or that the uh, special edition time lapses are really beefy. And so we're going to compare them to these cloud breakers, which I heard were not as beefy. I don't know. I've, I've, I've heard mixed things about it. So we're going to compare it. And then I also have two different Heimberg destroyers. Or this one's not a Heimberg, but it's a Halo destroyer. Similar beef to the Heimberg destroyers. This is a Heimberg destroyer that's a bit beat in. Flies a little straighter. So we're going to compare them all. And mostly what I'm going to be looking at is the forehand, because that's going to determine you know, like for my forehand, now that I have a tech disc, my forehand comes out faster with less spin, which makes it more likely to turn. So we can test stability with forehand a lot better than with backhand, in my opinion. But we'll throw one backhand, I'll have the drone up, and uh, we'll see kind of some flight lines of each of them, forehand, backhand, and uh, see where the new, you know, time lapse, neutron time lapse comes in as far as uh, overall beefiness. So first we're gonna look at the old reliables. This is a slightly less beefy Heimberg destroyer. And this is the, the ultra beef. Probably put them out to the right here, right of this little red stick and just let them fade back to the catch cam. Pretty typical flight. Held that flat line a little bit more, considering I didn't get much power on that. I was a little more hysered. And a little bit shorter as a result. All right, first cloud breaker. They both had the same die and everything. 175, this one says. A little bit lower, but they're all looking. They're all looking like the same flight back end, and really that's kind of what I expected. Ah, oh, that one hit my shoulder. Ooh, sit. Cool, let's go look for that in the woods. Next up, time lapse. Yeah, I kind of uh, yanked the shit out of that. So, Man, I thought this rock would be like a lot more reliable as far as planting. Anyway, so yeah, they really all feel pretty much the same back end. So these all landed within probably a 12 foot circle, except for this guy. I'm gonna eat my bears. All right, let's mix it up. Cloud breaker, forehand. I'm aiming at that tree left of the, uh, the orange cone and it should fade back. All these I'll be doing the split finger just to try to see if they get off axis torque more. I'm trying to release flat. Okay, wow, that actually drifted over to the, uh, wobbled over to the left a bit. Kind of surprising. I think, I think even this might be a little more stable than that. Let's see if I can get some of this dust off. So, the less, less beefy Heimberg Destroyer. Oh, I fucking slipped there. Ugh, it's annoying. 
Yeah, the planting on this, I should have thought that through, but now I already got the drone up and everything. That's fine. We'll look at this. This guy here, try and release a little flatter. Try and plant a little better. <sighs> yeah, it does flip up just a touch. That one, I think, might be beefier than the first one, though. The first one seemed to really kind of pop up. Here's my very beefy halo. Third Coast Memorial, yeah. That was a great release, and look at that. Nice and flat, and then it just fights out so fast. So, that's kind of what I expected from that one. Let's see what the time lapse does. Um, maybe a, closer to my, probably closer to my, uh, my Heinberg destroyer, the black one, if I'd be honest. Not that I got to show much of that, but uh, the, the handsome fellow at uh, Apollo Disc Golf, shout out there, uh, was saying that it was like much less workable than he was expecting and much more overstable. So I was thinking, hey, if it's like that, that might be something I can use as a backup to uh, some of the Halo destroyers once they start to you know, beat in and I run out of them. So. Uh, but overall, let's let's go back. Let's throw them split finger, which usually comes out a little cleaner. Gets a little less of the off-axis wobble that flies it straighter, and we'll see kind of how it does when I'm not intentionally wobbling the shit out of them. <laughs> Again, all landing probably within 15 feet of each other. That's that's insane. Okay, so now we're gonna try the flat. Stacked finger, this is usually gives less wobble out of the hand. And uh, we'll see how, see how they do, see if they're maybe a little bit more stable. Uh, I think this usually gives a little more spin, if I recall, from the tech disc. So, a little less spin, a little less wobble. Usually a more consistent initial flight. Yeah, super beef. With that little less wobble, it doesn't really hold its angle as much. It really wants to fight out quick. Okay, Cloudbreaker. I don't really, let's see. Is there a way to differentiate between these two? I think they're both. Oh, there's a 174 and a 175, okay. I guess I should have pointed that. I'm guessing the 174 was the one that kind of flipped up a little. Anyway, this is the 175. A little bit higher launch, but uh, yeah, it still did flip up a little bit. Let's check the 174. Yeah, that one definitely rode up a bit. Same line, so consistent. I really do love that about destroyers is like, you need to hit a line in the woods and you can let it finish a direction. Going with the uh, Heimberg. That one really does stay flat for longer, I think. Gosh, this, these rocks kind of suck. That was piss poor planning. All right, let's see. Save the uh, the new hotness for last. Oh, I threw it into the ground. Skip. Do over. Okay, flat. That was a little bit hyzered. Fought out quick though. Really not a great release. So what I'll do is I'll just go full power on all of them. See if we can get a good big flex line out of, out of one of them. My catch can's at about 340, 350. So if I could hit that, it's a pretty good pull. So let's go check it out. Okay, so we looked at the stacked and the split grip. Now we're just gonna full send and see what kind of distance we can get. Let's go with the, uh, the little Zot time lapse first. This has been pretty beefy. Oh, it's got to get up. Fuck. Damn it. Can't put it on that much angle. Okay, Heimberg Destroyer. I know this one needs some time to flex out, especially on a big Annie.
and I didn't do that either. Cool, two for two. There we go. Beefy halo. There it is. Just so nice. Okay, these guys I know that I can't put on as much of an angle. Probably try and just do like a little ante, or at least get them higher in the air so that they got time to work. This is the 175. That could be good, come on. Oof. Yeah, that was fucking smoked. It's like 360 maybe? I'll range finder the uh, camera from back there. 174, probably can't do as much, but that was a really good line. Let's see if I can hit my catch cam. Oh, that slipped. It's high enough that it's gonna flex. Kinda weak though. Okay, we're gonna redo the Heimberg and the time lapse. Okay, time lapse first. Let's try and see what it can do. A little flatter than last time. That's pretty good. It's not gonna be that far because it oh it kind of got pushed down a lot. It's beefy, it's definitely beefy. But not I'd say beefier than the Heimberg. Beat up Heimberg. Okay, let's try this guy. Come on, fight back. There we go. Okay, that one's pretty far too. 340 maybe, 350? I'll go laser. So yeah, time lapse, about 320. Maybe, maybe, no, maybe 310. Yeah, 309. The heavier cloud breaker, 306. Okay, so the Heimberg destroyer didn't quite get as far as I thought. It is, I mean, still probably close to 340, maybe 325. Oh, found a soft spot. 342. And then the light cloud breaker. Dude, this thing was a beast. This might replace my Heimberg. Three sixty one. Damn, that's like kind of like my Ballista Pro. That big full flight on the uh, very overstable. Damn it, that red thing's in the way. Three thirty-seven on the big flex, so not not shabby. I'll just walk and talk with this guy, save myself some editing. Like I said, big project coming up. It is something unlike anything else in disc golf video. Uh, it'll be the next video after this one. This one will probably, I'm gonna try and edit it today, get it fully up, and then, you know, kind of whet the appetite for, uh, for the big project, which uh, I hope it'll be fun. It might hit with a dud. I don't know, uh, it's definitely an interactive type deal. But uh, yeah, it's something I've thought about for a while and I finally saw a way to make it happen. So I'm not gonna spoil it too much because it is something I wanna be like a bit of a surprise. Oh dude, the drone hit something. Why does it always do that? So how beefy is the special edition time lapse? It's decently beefy, like uh, in Corpus Winds, I could see it getting like a good amount of flight, you know, just 
rip it into a headwind. I'm not in corpus, so this probably won't hit the bag uh, right away. Although there is like a spot for like a, a workable level of beef. And like, uh, honestly, it's not that far below the, this, uh, the Halo, Halo Destroyer. So really, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty excited about it because if this guy beats in too much, this can easily fill that role. Uh, it is beefier than a beat up Heimberg Destroyer. I would say like, uh, you know, you could see how the flat release, this kind of just hung out a little bit longer before finding out where the, uh, the Lazat time lapse, the, uh, you know, special edition time lapse. Cause I heard the, uh, the non-special edition, I heard they're a little bit more workable. And then, uh, but it's definitely beefier than either of the cloud breakers. This, uh, this 174 is actually really impressive. It's, I just recently lost my Ballista Pro, so this could end up hitting the bag at some point. I mean, this color is not great because uh, it's pretty losable. Although blue, blue is visible and blue supposedly flies farther. And we'll get into the, the blue versus pink battle. Uh, so yeah, the overall, there's not time lapse, pretty, pretty beefy. I mean, it's, uh, it's up there. I think it's beefier than some of the stock run Halo destroyers. So uh, uh, definitely, definitely something in the wind, probably fantastic for like a, uh, a more casual player or a beginner doesn't really don't really have the arm speed maybe not the disc for you however because of the over stability if you throw bad forehands you it might be worth picking up because you can just throw that shit in the air all wobbly and whatever and it'll fight its way out so that's kind of how i started throwing forehands and uh you know it works three 360 on, the, on one of them here so yeah, it's a good disc. Really, like you can't go wrong with that archetype. It's it's so so challenging to uh, to mess it up for the most part for manufacturers. Prodigy might be the closest to I don't know. Some of their stuff is a little, but uh, but other than that, I mean, it's it's a uh, destroyer archetype. It's it's a it's a good reliable, overstable high speed disc. So. As always, thank you for watching, and hopefully I see you on the course.